What is up, my Raising Wellness Beauties? Welcome back to the second part of this MBSR, Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction video series that I'm creating for you guys. This video is all about weeks four through eight of the MBSR training. I'm really excited to share this information and knowledge with you as it's really, truly helped me change my life, bring mindfulness into my daily practice, informally and formally. And we're also going to be taking out the rest of my dreadlocks. Yes, I have dreadlocks. I've had a lot of dreadlocks in the past, but I have 11 more to go and I wanna take my six-year-old dreadlocks out with you in this video today. So before we jump in, I have Nemo here with me today, and I just wanna give you a little bit of history as to why I started dreadlocking my hair. And if you don't want to hear about why I dreadlocked my hair, I'm going to put a timestamp down below as to where I start talking about MBSR and weeks four through eight. So those of you who want to hear a little bit about my story, learn a little bit more about me, the reason that I got dreadlocks was because my dad passed away about eight years ago now, about two months after I started college down here in Florida, moved from Maine, and he passed away from suicide based on depression. Really, depression was his transition down into choosing suicide. And that hit a chord with me. A lot of growing, a lot of healing has happened since then. But a big thing that I took from it was that my dad felt trapped. He felt stuck. He felt like he didn't have a way out. There was a lot of money issues. He was in the housing industry when 2008 hit and then a lot of things happened with his business and for me as how old was I then 18 19 um, I took it as he felt stuck and when I moved to college I really wanted to never feel like that Nemo <laughs> make a weird noise in the back. I really never wanted to feel like that. I never wanted to be um, feeling like I was stuck in a box and wasn't able to be my true self, is essentially what I was thinking was occurring and why my dad chose the path that he did, which um, no one's to say if that really was true or not, but that's what I had in my head was that he was caged in, he was boxed in, he felt like he had no way to live out his truth or his purpose without being judged. and. Everyone could have a different perspective on it. That was personally mine. And so putting dreadlocks in my hair was a way to go against society. It was a way to prove to people that, hey, just because I have dreadlocks means I can get a good education. It means I can get a good job. You know, a lot of people told me before I got dreadlocks was that you won't be able to get a job. You won't be able to do this. People won't see you like this. And I really wanted to prove them wrong and prove myself wrong to remind myself that I can always follow my bliss and will be led in the direction that is best for me. So that is a really quick snapshot of why I got dreadlocks. And why I'm taking them out is because I'm feeling like I'm coming into this time in my life. They're almost seven years old. They'll be seven years old in July 20th, my birthday. And I'm feeling, feeling like I'm coming into this time in my life where these dreadlocks are almost representing a cocoon. So all of these 11 dreadlocks that I have back here are almost representing a cocoon that I am ready and a little bit scared to break free from. So it's very symbolic to me to be taking out these last 11 dreadlocks. I did have about almost 50 dreadlocks at one point all throughout my hair. I never dreadlocked my bangs. I'll put some pictures here for you guys so you can see that I did have full dreadlocks in my hair. So without further ado, I'm going to start combing out some of these dreadlocks and talk to you guys a little bit about mindfulness. So let's get started here. Okay, you guys, so for those of you who are wondering, taking out these dreadlocks, these 11 dreadlocks that are actually almost seven years old, took me about 3.25 hours on my fine, thin hair. So now, getting into mindfulness, I really want to talk about this MBSR course because I adored this course so much. It helped me 
so much. Like, I can't even tell you how much more clarity I have, how more, how much more smoothly I can move through those ups and downs of life based upon the lessons I learned in this course. If you guys want to know more about the weeks one through four, where we started learning about mindfulness practices, really the basics, that is in the first video of this series, and I have it linked down below. But this video, we're going to talk about basically weeks 4.5 through 8. Because at this point, I started seeing this trend in class where a lot of us really were adoring what we were learning, you know, really taking it home and practicing it and using it for ourselves. But then we all started to have the same curiosity. How do you bring these mindfulness practices and this element of compassion and kindness into the world to our day-to-day -day basis where other people don't have the knowledge, you know, where people are abrasive, where life can sometimes be harsh? How do you take these practices and use them in your life but not be a doormat, essentially, is what everyone was asking? And that is why weeks basically 4.5 through 8 are really essential because we started talking about mindful communication. And this was so amazing and so helpful. Mindful communication really helps you take that moment to stop and respond with kindness and productivity rather than that immediate autopilot reaction we usually have in our life based upon experiences we've had in the past and it really helps you get to stop and think and what I want to tell you is that there's a couple of things we've used in class that helped us to take that moment to stop and respond and it also really enlightened us to see our autopilot reactions I can see it in my conversations with people, I can see it in how I interact with the world. And because I can see it, I can now stop it or change it, do whatever feels better for me. And what I want you guys to take from this video are these two acronyms. One is RAIN and the other is a tune. And they're both really helpful to helping you understand the way you communicate in the world. And they really help you to communicate with that same element of kindness and compassion, but to also set boundaries and to have open, honest conversations that otherwise, you know, we go about life assuming things about others, assuming things about ourselves, going in that autopilot kind of mode. So RAIN, this first acronym, is recognize, allow, investigate with kindness and non-identification with the experience. Non-identification meaning not having an emotional attachment to the experience. And I apologize, we almost had some accidental nudity in this video. My boyfriend did not know that I was recording, so I apologize for that. Um, so let's first talk about RAIN, this acronym of RAIN, and talk about the first letter R, which is recognize. It's to recognize the experience, to start building a safe container to be in the experience with yourself or with the other person. And the A is for allowing, allowing the experience to be what it is. So many times we stop an experience or have immediate judgment of experience instead of just seeing it purely as it is without assumptions or emotional attachment or judgment, we're going to we are going to instead simply allow it to be as it is without any lens or perspective that we layer on top of it. And that really, really frees you up. And I just want to say for those of you who are watching this video to 
learn how to take out dreadlocks or just interested in taking out dreadlocks, one tip that I do have is I have taken out a lot of dreadlocks and putting conditioner in the hair definitely helps a lot, loosen up the knots obviously, but it also helps to make sure you aren't breaking your hair that you do have inside the dreadlock that's, you know, not the hair that you would have lost for however many years you've had your dreads. So it's just going to help protect it, give it um, a little bit more hydration that it possibly needs because it is going to be really kinky when it first comes out. My hair, once you see this dry, it gets um, really kinky because it's been in these tight knots for however long your hair has been in dreadlocks. So just make sure you use a conditioner and also wash your hair in cold water afterwards and condition it so that you can give it all that hydration that it needs and keep it protected while it's a fresh new baby out of its cocoon and in the open. Alright, back to mindfulness practices. It truly frees you up to see the conversation or experience or person or yourself in a completely different light that maybe those autopilot habits had been taking over you know, really clouding the lens. And once you allow this experience to be what it is, you can investigate, but instead of invest investigating with judgment, investigate with kindness. And also dreadlock tip. If you're watching this to learn how to take out dreadlocks, I hope that you're learning a lot of valuable information that you may not have otherwise learned in other dreadlock taking out tutorials. But what I also do is when I put the conditioner in my hair, you'll see me doing this. And that's just like pushing the knot up, like grabbing a bunch of it and then pushing together and kind of circling it in circles. And that helps get the conditioner inside the dreadlock, making it um, penetrate the knots and easier to take out. And you can investigate with this kindness and a place of compassion for whatever it is you're in communication with and just understand that if you were given the exact same information, the, act, the exact same upraising, the exact same experiences, you would be reacting in the same way as that person or experience. Okay? So that's how you really approach these things, these times of communication, no matter what they are, with kindness. And then once you have been able to investigate, you know, you've taken this pause rather than the reactivity that we're usually always doing on that autopilot kind of space like I was talking about. Once you have this space to respond, look at it with kindness or excuse me, once you have this space to recognize, allow the space to be open and available, investigate with kindness, then you can have non-identification to the experience or person. So many times I see it in myself even, when you're in communication with a person, place, thing, whatever it is, you attach to it. You know, the outcome of the conversation, you attach your ego to. The outcome of a project you attach your ego to, the outcome of a project or a conversation, you allow yourself to feel in a certain way. Maybe you feel offended or maybe you feel mistreated or maybe you feel happy and excited. But mindfulness is really about keeping this equilibrium, this balance of your emotions, no matter what the ups and downs are that are going on around you, no matter what the storm is doing, really. And that practice that feeling of, you know, perfect equilibrium in all things comes about when you have non-identification with the experience or the communication. So again, RAIN is to recognize, allow, investigate with kindness, and then have non-identification to the experience. And from there, you can respond. So I hope you guys got all that. It's kind of a lot of information to take in, but it's really important. And the next acronym for communication is, or mindful communication, <laughs> is ATTUNE. And we're just going to briefly go over ATTUNE here. It's A, to aspire. So creating the container for open, productive discussion, non-reactive discussion. And then 
the TT is to turn towards. A lot of times, myself included, there are difficult things, difficult people, difficult projects, experiences, whatever it may be, and we try to resist it because we have some kind of emotional lens blocking us from turning towards it, some kind of resistance stopping us from turning towards the darkness. And TT really helps you to turn towards those difficult things by stopping, taking a breath, and relaxing into that open container that you created with the A, the Aspire in a tune. And the U in a tune is understanding that whomever you're in communication with, that they are a person like you who wants to be heard and loved and really truly stepping into their shoes by again understanding that if you were that person or whatever it is you're in communication with, if you had the same upbringing, experiences, you had give, been given the same information in your life, that you would be acting in the same way as them. So really having that um, compassionate lens, that compassionate perspective to talk to that person, place, thing, whatever it is you're in communication with. The N in a tune is to nourish the conversation with deep listening, presence, and openness. I, myself included, like I said, this helps me so much with my communication skills, but a lot of times in conversations, we are already thinking of the advice or the answer we want to give in that conversation before that other person, place, or thing is done speaking or communicating with us. We are so reactive, completely reactive into every single situation instead of taking that pause in the beginning and just nourishing the conversation with deep listening. We, what my experience is that I have found there's been so many instances where I try to give advice, but that person simply just wants to be heard and listened to. And it takes a lot of the stress away in conversations. You know, if you're constantly trying to manipulate the conversation in your head into a certain direction so you can talk about this thing that you're thinking about, or if you want to give certain advice and um, help that person in a certain way, you really miss their facial expressions, their tone of voice, what they're actually trying to say. And you kind of gloss over those things, but with nourishing the conversation with deep listening, you really allow yourself to be present, to be open, and to just have that container for that open, honest conversation, really see if that person just needs to be heard for the moment or if they truly need advice. And when you nurse the com- nourish the conversation with deep listening, you can give better advice. You can really be more present. You can give more love and and really create more connection with that person, place, or thing that you're in communication with. So nourishing all the conversations you have with deep listening and presence and openness. And the E, the last letter in a tune, is to express with heart. And heart is spelt H-A-R-T. It's an acronym within an acronym. And heart means honesty, affection, at the right time and place, and to benefit all. So express with heart is when you respond if it's needed. So you're going to express yourself with honesty, you know, not putting a mask on, not saying what you think needs to be said, but with true authentic honesty, not pretending to be anyone but yourself. And with affection, so having that kindness and compassion and care for that person, understanding that if you were given the same experiences and info as them, you would be acting in the same way. And then to respond at the right time and place. So if I were to bring some sensitive topic up with my boyfriend, I wouldn't talk about it at the dinner table with his parents. You know, I would talk about it at the right time and place, maybe when we're at our house enjoying a meal together when it's just me and him. So really having that compassion for the person to respond to them in the right time or place that is beneficial to the conversation. 
And then your response should be to benefit all. So to always have that care, kindness, and compassion and openness with your response to benefit everyone, kind of like compromise in a way, but to really benefit all of the people, things, whatever is included in the communication that you are a part of. So make sure that if your response is coming from the heart, it will be with honesty, with affection at the right time and place and to benefit all that are present. And these are really the two big topics that we talked about in this 4.5 to 8 week part of the MBSR course. I hope that you guys learned a lot (laughs) from what I had to say and I hope that you can bring it into your life and play around with this type of communication, this type of response rather than autopilot reactivity and just see how it changes the conversations. See how it changes your communication with others and yourself, whatever it is you're in communication with. All right, you guys, that's the end of this video. The dreadlocks are officially out after six years. I can't believe that they're all gone. It's crazy feeling. The back of my head feels really crazy, but it feels awesome to brush through my whole head all at once. I will be getting a brand new sustainable comb and brush. I will link it down below if you guys are interested in more sustainable body care items. And I hope that during this video you learned a lot about mindfulness, how to mindfully communicate using rain and using a tune to really bring mindfulness and presence and open trust and honesty and listening into your conversations every single day just to give more love and kindness to the world and to let yourself de-stress from conversations and communications that you have in your daily life. I am off to a meeting with a bunch of other creators in the area and I will be sending you guys, or I am sending you guys, so much love, so much gratitude and I will see you in our next video. All the love to you. And last thing I forgot to show you. My hair baby from just 11 dreadlocks. Gone and open and ready for the world.